Ship's Log, Merchant Vessel 387, The Glory and Wonder. Acting Captain Inez Godspeed. Three days out from Lease, continuing north-northeast to Brigantel. Four more sailors gone, including Corin. City folk tell tales of monsters from the stars, of never and great hordes marching across the plains. As if this were news of the end of the world. We sailors know. The world is already done. It's closing its tab. Leviathans under the water have been waiting for this day. Great protean beasts, dressed for war, tending their hate like a fire. Spoiling for a fight. Waiting in the deep. Maybe we're just trading one apocalypse for another. The never and their dread voice might be the harbingers of the end. But between fighting never on solid ground or getting pulled down into the sea, I'll choose the sea every time. Let the horizon be the last thing I see. Let the salt on the wind be the last thing I taste. Some folks just don't belong on dry land. I suppose some folks don't belong at sea. It makes me wonder about the folks that don't belong to neither. Where do they go when the end comes? So, we are getting ready to embark upon a mission back to Duskfall Canyon to do something with the star. Um, mm-hmm. Devin, would you read uh, the special mission that we have selected for today? Uh, special mission, uh, hyphen religious, uh, parentheses, cleansing. <laughs> I have an idea, Sarah Colley says. She carries the beacon in a leather sheath made for it. The beacon has opened up possibilities. The assistance, I believe I can, compel the star into some course of action. As for what that course of action is, I defer to the Legion Command staff. She meets Azar's eyes unwaveringly. It will, of course, be incredibly dangerous. And our reward is plus one favor of the mystic variety, plus one exceptional asset, and plus one endgame points. And our penalties, if we do not succeed, are plus one pressure, one death, and each legionnaire will each each legionnaire with corruption will take plus two corruption. Eek. Outstanding. Azar, of course, only has one eye. Don't don't write in. Everyone knows this. Mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna say anything. No, I know. I'm talking to the audience. I don't want the audience to write in and be like, You don't want um, cinema excuse sins me. to point out this glaring plot hole. <laughs> excuse me, Azar of Draknor, or to be like, wait, this Azar has two eyes. Did Azar get recast? Uh, is this an imposter? <laughs> Azar. Oh, did I accidentally say did I accidentally say eyes no. plural? Yeah. That was the joke. Big or Azar. <laughs> <laughs> Azar, but sus. Oh, He's wait a minute. Sus. Yeah, as a regular it's Azar normal is normal Um, Yeah, so Sarah Kali and a squad are headed back to Duskfall Canyon to do something with the star. But I'm, and we've talked a little bit offline about what it is that 
the exceptional asset might be that you get from out of this. But I'm really curious to talk about what what Azar, but also the rest of the command staff, I guess, wants to have happen with this star. I mean, to the people that didn't see it, it's probably even hard to like think about or comprehend what Absolutely. it is and what it's for. 100%. Yeah. Like, Do people think that there's a feeling of like, we should destroy it, we should study it, we should send it back into the sky? What, what are people's like, gut reactions about like what what the sense of purpose is for this. Do we have a established how we feel about stars? I know the sky generally is a bad thing. I think I was, I was reading the ground itself uh, notes earlier and, and stars are also not a good sign um, from, from that at least stars are like, yeah, there used to be sky there, and now it's down here, and that's why there's stars. So stars are also bad. Yeah, it's like holes in the body, right, that are showing what's yeah. behind it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I think it was like people aren't agreed on what's on the other side of the dead corpse sky, but everyone does agree that it's bad. Yeah, then I think that um, Azar, at least, is... I think that Azar says, um, I don't care what you do with it but I want it gone. Interesting. Okay. I think Kale agrees with Azar for the first time in a while and is like, <laughs> the sky just took entire home of my people. I don't think we should be trifling with any sort of machination from the sky. Interesting. I bet there's likewise, you know, maybe not necessarily among the command staff, but among the... Um, Iliander's that are here, there's almost certainly a sense of like, is this star going to start sucking this place up into the sky? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, Commander, do you have any questions based on Always. your current intel? We have one intel, so this will be two questions total. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that this is kind of a weird one, right? Because it's this, this weird religious mission. We don't really know what we're doing here. So I'm feeling like the one or more intel question that makes the most sense is what's useful to bring on this mission. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Reliquaries, almost certainly. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that just from the reports that you've gotten from the team that was there before and that sort of cursory reconnaissance that Sarikali did over the last downtime that we saw. I think there's definitely a sense of like, this place is seeped in corruption and Mm -hmm. continuing to fiddle with whatever this is, is definitely going to um, expose whoever is there uh, to corruption. Fun. Is Sarikali coming? Yes. Okay. Because the, the, she was saying that I can do this. So I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, she's coming along for this mission. Which means that we won't get our free plus one die, which is very exciting. Yep. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. We'll have Sierra Kali with us. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have your second Intel question? Yeah, um, I was looking at, uh, again, because this one's so vague and part of this is maybe we're going to define this in play but um what are two approaches we could use here on a mission Mm, okay interesting so i think i think what you know based on you know suricali's proposition here is that she is going to use the beacon she's going to play the beacon in some way to interact with the star which means, yes, you'll have Sari Kali with you, but she's going to be focused and occupied in a way that removes a lot of the advantage that I think having it chosen along with you might otherwise have. I think that having her there provides a certain degree of prestige and maybe even like radiance that, that wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise be present. Um, but she's if she's like helping swing a sword then she's not playing the beacon. She can't do both at once. So I think that there's a couple of different things that you could do with that in mind. One is to try and get in and clean the place out ahead of time 
establish a beachhead and make sure that Sari Kali can do what it is that she's doing uninterrupted. The other approach, I think, would be to try and go in a little bit more like you went before, where it's a little bit more of an infiltration, where you're trying to be surreptitious, where you're trying to be relatively innocuous until you begin the operation and sort of use that to your advantage. Well, Lance is leading this one, so I have a suspicion of which of those two ways he's going to prefer to go. Great, 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 great. I, do I think Azar might even say that. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Um, I do feel like both of those questions probably told you stuff that you already knew um, to a certain extent. I am curious if there is anything like, like, as I said, um, Suricali is kind of leaving the the objective to the Legion, but the Legion is not in the cut in the habit of throwing people into the, the fire without a, a sense of what it is that they should be doing at least. And so I'm, right. cur- I'm curious if there is like maybe a more, basically what I'm saying is if there is a custom question that is like related to the, the operation here at hand, I'll give that to you because this is pretty peculiar. Hmm. I mean, I know what a czar wants to ask, which is the reason why he's okay this mission, but it's not helpful. What is that? Uh, he wants to know how Sarah Colley cannot come back after this mission. That's interesting. Maybe um, it is helpful because we can always play to avoid that. Sure. Absolutely. Saying like, uh, my lady, is there some risk to you in, in exposing <laughs> yourself to this thing? You wouldn't say that. No, of course but not. Yeah, of course not. That's the vibe. Or, or, or arranging it so that someone else asks that. Sure. Yeah, that's more likely. He, he yeah. could definitely put like uh, Nabane up to it, for example. Nabane exactly. Love to do that. Just sort of like oh. Emperor Palpatine, like, um, oh, I, I hope that Sari Kali will be all right. I love democracy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the anime that we always have to reference. <laughs> is there a way that Sari Kali doesn't come back from this thing? The answer is yes. And that is... <laughs> um, Whatever is on the other side of the star is not in the habit of giving things back. Mm. Um, I don't like that entire sentence. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good sentence. <laughs> yeah, man. I love it. What's I mean, on the other side of... Mm. Uh-huh. No, I'm good. It's cool. It's fine. You know, just to extrapolate a little bit of what the mission is... You've seen, you discovered, you completed that long-term project. You discovered that the beacon is something that facilitates communication between two parties. Um, right. If Sari Kali thinks that she can use it with the star, then it's worth asking what it is she's communicating with. Mm-hmm. Whether or not that's something someone does in character or not. Also, why she's confident that she knows what to do here. Uh Uh-huh. I think that's something Nikolaj would ask. Yeah. Um, Well, speaking of Nikolaj, let's talk uh, about who it is that's going on this mission. Marshall. Okay. Uh, For the primary mission, I have Lance, Nikolaj, and Nabain leading the Ember Wolves. And on the Ember Wolves, I have assigned a soldier named Ashley, who's got good grenade skills. Excellent. Who's, uh, who's playing the squad? Uh, so I'm playing Lance. Excellent. I'm playing Nikolaj. Also excellent. I'm back at it again with the Bane. Of, uh, backpack at it again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. it. I, I misspoke. I misspoke once again. I understand. Don't worry. We can we can fix it in post. I'll be playing the new character, Ashling. Excellent. Um, I imagine him as a Iliander sailor from the uh, Bleeding Horizon. His grenades are usually used for fighting big, terrible whale creatures that are at the edge of the world. It's very haunted looking dude. A really, really, really pale skin. A hair made of ivy. Very sunken eyes. Uh, very lankily built, um, and he always wears a uh, puffy utility vest that has a whole bunch of different kits in it. Um, and he has a Mento from Home, which is a rusty carabiner with his old ship's name on it, 
which is uh, Skian, which is Gaelic for knife. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, okay. I assume we've got armor, skill uses, and such cleared. What load is everyone bringing? Normal? Normal. So this is a religious mission, right? It is. But it's also in that canyon that hates it when you wear heavy stuff. I don't know if the canyon hates it. I mean, it's in that canyon. (laughs) Then I think I'm also going normal. I'm going to go normal too. Have we talked about how uh, Nikolaj slash Nikolai is a a custom playbook? No, maybe we haven't. Oh, that's Um, true. We haven't. No, this is the first first time time he's been on primary. Yeah. Yeah. Before we do that, um, Nabeen, what load are you bringing? Normal. Okay. Yeah. Um, Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about Nikolaj's playbook, The Augur? Sure. Uh, Like you just said, Nikolaj's playbook is uh, The Augur, which is a special, very cool playbook that we made when Nikolaj was uh, sworn to the Legion because he's part of the Eyes of Smoke, or was previously uh, uh, part of the Eyes of Smoke, which are the um, prophecy weirdos that Mm -hmm. nobody's super hot on. Um, the they're the ones who perverts. were like, yeah, time perverts. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> they're the they're the ones who were telling everybody, yes, attack the Omniculum of Zero. That's that's the best thing to do right now. And then it was awful, but they did that on purpose, and we don't know that yet. So nobody liked Nikolaj being there already, and now he's part of the Legion and also a specialist, which everybody is even less okay with. The Augur is, I mean, Augury is just foresight and prophecy stuff so all of his special abilities or a lot of his special abilities are shaped around that and the one that he does have is called this is my design which says (laughs) you can experience (laughs) you can experience a flashback that you did not personally witness so long as you have a sense memory on hand of someone who was there which is from the sleuth playbook by justin ford at mothlands on twitter presumably yeah we have uh a lot of moves that are that take a lot of inspiration from stuff that Justin Ford, again, at Mothlands on Twitter, has put together. But also uh, some stuff by Caro Ascension. Assertion. Caro Assertion. Like like assertion, like I'm saying something that I believe to be true. Yeah, but spelled different. Yes. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Caro Assertion. See Excursion on Twitter. <laughs> at Sea Excursion on Twitter. Particularly the occultist class from uh, Rear Guard, all of which uh, has been really good, which uses the Weave Specialist action, which is an action in Band of Blades, but that isn't assigned to any default playbooks, which I really love. Anyway, some some good stuff in there. Oh, right. Because I always forget to do that, I should describe what Nikolaj looks like. And thankfully, someone else has already face cast him as Lars Mikkelsen, specifically from the drama 1864. So um, if I remember correctly, he kind of has like a like a pretty gaunt face. Like this dude looks like he's seen some shit because he has um, kind of like salt we got two, and pepper. We got two of those at the party. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of salt and pepper, like beard and mustache. Except if I remember correctly, Nikolaj's like facial hair looks like kind of dried up scraggly plant roots. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, I guess it's time for the marshal to assemble the roll. Okay. Are all on the mission oaths sworn to the Legion? No. Did the commander spend one intel to give you foresight and info? Yeah. Uh, is everyone on the mission a specialist or soldier? No. Does any Legionnaire distrust the leadership or not fear them enough to obey orders on the battlefield? Nikolaj? Uh, You fear him. (laughs) No, the the fear is there. The fear is absolutely (laughs) there. Okay. I think that's the right read. Are required specialists or equipment not on the mission? No. Did the Quartermaster send religious supplies to ward and protect Legionnaires? I will. Okay, everyone mark reliquary. Is any Legionnaire starting with Blight? No. We have some corruption, but no Blight. I don't don't think anyone's actually taken Blight yet. Nope. I'm excited for that. Uh, So we roll two dice. 
two dice. It'll be fine. Do your best, dice. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's a six. Six and a one. But the six is it tried. The six stands. Avery tried. Yeah, I mean, you know the scene. The, the star is there. The canyon is there. The preternatural twilight is still here. The strange sense of wrongness is still here. And the star is still here. Um, but y'all really effectively drove at least the uh, the never that Hagano had uh, amassed here away. You have control of the situation going in. Gavin, t- tell me, tell me what wh- how your forces are arrayed as you arrive on the scene. Okay, um, I want some people on the cliffs. I think it depends on where Sarikali wants to stand to do this. I think she wants to be on the ground closer to where the star is. Okay. I don't know. Where does everyone else want to be? Uh, Nikolaj has the lenses, so if we need things seen from a distance, probably pretty good at that. And also, I imagine there's a bunch of people who would like... He tries to go like up where the rookies are. They're like, Meh. I if it helps, I think what Sarah Kali says when she gets within eye shot of this thing, she says, we'll have need of defensive wards around me as the calling begins. And I think looks to Nabane and probably also to Nikolaj. As if expecting that they would simply understand what that means. Hmm. I mean, Nabain probably would. Yeah. Matthew doesn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's true. Um, is, this, is this a thing that is a role to set up? I think so. I think this is the first clock. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'll just go ahead and make one. In, in plain view of the players, because you're in a controlled position, this is crafting the defensive wards. I'm playing a, a, a non-specialist for the first time, so uh, Captain, where do you want me? <laughs> um, so I, I've set up the rookies actually now on either side of the canyon to like surround anybody who comes from the east side. But the west side is fairly open, so I either want you across on the top left or near me on the bottom left. Okay. I'll pair up with you in case we need to like help each other. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I'm also setting up um, a, a negative clock over here on the side, simply called the Star Hungers. Um, um, not step six steps, not six stars. Uh, um, I was going to ask, like, what's yeah. a star? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, um, which doesn't have any ticks on it, but that is going to represent if like there's no enemies on the board right now. Um, that can ch- that may change as this ticks up. Sure. Sounds great. Well, I think that Nabane, uh, I marked books and scrolls. So I think that this is Nabane pulling out his like reference guide for defensive wards mm-hmm. and, you know, cracking it open and doing the thing where you like um, you open a book so that other people can see and like sidling up to um, Nikolaj, who he's already done like a uh, uh, worked on a long term project with and saying, um, uh, um, uh, Nikolaj, uh, it's it's been it's been um, some time for me um, setting up a defensive ward. Um, clearly lying. Uh, he doesn't know. He has never done this before. Um, he's familiar, but yeah. he's never done this before. He said, "I, I was wondering if you'd, you'd um, like to join me in reviewing." <laughs> of course, uh, Sarah Collie trusts you with this, so I'll um, follow your lead in terms of setting it up. I'm not sure how the Legion handles this sort of thing. Um, so I think what I'm angling for here is a group research war- role between yeah. myself and uh, and Nikolaj. I'll lead it. Sure. Also, also like Nikolaj also has fun books and scrolls. So like while 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 Nabain is like yes. getting these these books, Nikolaj probably like also gets out these books and is like, I don't know how you all handle this, but I'll see if we can cross reference it with anything I have. I <laughs> nice. Very good. So it, we're starting at controlled and do find books and scrolls give us great effect on this? Or is this a setup action? Are you imagining that the 
the setting up of the ward is actually like a completely distinct thing that it would not, this would not push this clock. No, I think it would. I, I think this okay. is, this is a fair thing to do to increase the clock. It is not the exclusive okay. thing that you need to do. I think someone has to actually right. like take the steps of physically crafting the thing, but this is absolutely a thing that you can do to start. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Right, so controlled, is... great group action. Go ahead and do that roll. Six. Two and a six. Okay, nice. that's a success as well. So I will, uh, no stress. In which case, uh, bu- 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 I believe that is three ticks, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, between the two of you, yeah, like, I, I think that there is enough shared knowledge between the two of you that, like, as far as everyone else is concerned, they just sort of, like, witness, like, a two nerds in the library montage where, like, all of a sudden <laughs> there's more books than anyone realized had been brought along <laughs> on the mission. Um, Seri Kali, like... And they brought on a lot of books. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, Seri Kali, mm-hmm. like, is patient, but very slowly lifts one eyebrow. Probably has, like, clear throat at a certain point to, like, <laughs> keep, you, keep you focused. But, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know precisely what it is that you should be drawing. In that case, uh, this is probably not a role that Nabane would be particularly good at. So is this something where we could get somebody else actually doing the drawing part of it with just direction? If that's a rig at all, Nikolaj has one in rig. I don't you know, know who has two in rig? Ashling. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, maybe this could be good. Absolutely. Nikolaj right. and, and the Bane <laughs> least, guiding yeah. Ashling. All right, soldier. <laughs> if, if this is if, what you're here for, I suppose. Am I the toughest one in the, the squad in terms of the non-specialists? You're the only soldier. Everyone else okay. is Gemma, Thar, Masha. Bowie. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Actually, just one thing before we move on with that, just to add a little bit of color. I think once you two realize what it is that you're looking for, Mm -hmm. Nikolaj like flips to a page and like precisely what you need is there. And Mm. I, I think that there was probably an expectation that you would probably need to cobble something together from a couple different sources. Um, But, but weirdly Nikolaj has just exactly what it is you need. Hmm. Anyway, just, just dropping that in there for everyone to turn over yep. a little bit. Yep, cool, great. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, but where would we ever get this? And Nicholas is, Nicholas just, like, ruffles through, like, f- you know, folds of, like, outer coat. Just like, oh, what, like this? Oh, weird. It says here, specifically for when Sarah Colley is <laughs> using the beacon to talk to the star. You know, I always wondered what that uh. meant, but here we are. <laughs> Um, yeah, how do you how do you get Ashling in the mix here? You know that thing where two people are are talking and you're not sure what they're talking about, and then they both turn and look at you, and you're like, "Oh, it was me." They were talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> All the like they're just like consulting these books, and then just pause, and then like both look up at Ashley. <laughs> I think Ashling is like kind of staring off into the distance. I don't think they're even looking. Never not haunted this one. Nabane does a uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, clearing his throat very loudly in Ashley's direction. Oh, uh, me? Uh, y- y- yes, if you if you wouldn't mind, um, uh, we'd like you to to um, uh, sketch something into the ground for us. <laughs> I was up on the cliff, so do I just like pull out my hook and just like dramatically? <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Belay, belay, belay my way down. Yeah, just Errol Flynn yeah. like. <laughs> I think Lance gives you like a, a a little pat or a push or something with his still there hand. Yeah, I mean he he's jumped off of moving boats onto moving whales before, so this is fine. <laughs> to to Ashling, this is normal. Yeah, I mean yeah. The, the terrible whales have armor and stuff, so you need a really sharp hook to get in. I didn't realize that Ashling was from Dishonored. <laughs> <laughs> I I. I, I was joking that I basically made a Blades of the Dark character. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Every setting can have haunted, terrible whales. <laughs> yeah. Damn, aspirational. I want to hear Nicolaj or Debane, like, tell, tell Ashling what it is that Ashling needs to do here. You need me to blow something up? This is only going to be the second most fucked up thing I've ever blown up. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I think he already yet. has his. I think he already has his fingers like on the pin of a grenade. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe, maybe later. Um, we were we were thinking of a um, a slightly different kit uh, to start off with. Siri Kali raises her other eyebrow. <laughs> oh. Um. What do these words look like? Is it is it like yeah some some patterns designs whatever got to be carved into the ground? Yeah, I th- I think it's definitely like magical protection circle in in vibe. But but I'm interested if other folks have like ideas of like what the the symbols or runes themselves might look like. Given that it was an eyes of smoke person who found yeah. it. Yeah, Chris. I was, I was just like, uh huh. Does, does, does he just have to be like, okay, well, you're gonna want to put, you know, it's like this thing here, this thing here, and like Nicolas is just saying it like really matter of factly. It's like it's this here, and then you know, showing Ashley the book, like it's this symbol is gonna go over here, the eye will go there, and then you're gonna want to like, you know, put like cross it out a little bit, stuff like that. Um, uh huh. It's just like, oh, right, eyes of smoke. Nyeh. Oh, so you want me to draw a pretty picture? I mean, the prettiness isn't the point, but yes, effectively. The the precision, the precision, soldier, is the point, and that's why we'd like you to do it. Ah, okay. Uh, Could I, could I tie knots in the shapes of the symbols? Mm. No, the the, the precision is very important here. It has to, it has to exactly match. Uh, or the, we would, we would, and then he, you know, and then like gets up close to Ashley and he's like, um, Otherwise, we risk the safety of the chosen. Right. Um, would I have like just like a knife or something like that in one of my kits that I could use to? You got like three kits. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I lost the page. God, oh, I have a knife. Uh, you have a fine, heavy weapon. I mean, the medic kit probably has a scalpel. Oh yeah, can yeah. you just use the big ass hook, like the pointy end, and just kind of <laughs> yeah. carve it into the ground? That's actually pretty funny that he like would pull you would expect him to pull out something finer and then he just like pulls the big hook off of his back and starts uh dragging it through the dirt the bin like waves his hands and opens his mouth like he's gonna stop him but uh it's already too late they're already like deep in it to it <laughs> and like it's it well we'll see how the roll goes but like right. it, it's effective this ashling knows how to use a pick mm-hmm. well let's find out if ashling knows how to use a pick yeah so that's uh, 2d6 for me uh, that's a that's five. A five. All right, five. Um, controlled standard. Yeah, controlled standard gets you forward. To be clear, you got two ticks on crafting the defensive wards. You're almost there. You have just one tick to go on that. You do it. You, regardless of um, predilection for blowing things up or um, reluctance to draw pictures, yes, you understand exactly how to how to put this. To paper, so to speak. I think, however, maybe in the course of doing it, that you draw maybe closer to the star than you had intended. But you get a controlled consequence. I'm going to tick the star hunkers by one, which I think someone could resist if they were so inclined. Maybe, I think this is probably insight of realizing that... A little too close. Yeah. That maybe the star is (laughs) reacting uh, in some strange way. Too bad Aoife's not here with her incredible insight resistance. <laughs> yeah, too bad. <laughs> that I never get to use as Aoife. <laughs> Do we see the star react? Like, yeah. Like, does the star change, shift, wiggle? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know what happens? Um, part of it starts reaching for Ashling. Oh, like a solar flare, but little? Yeah. Uh, Got arm. Like a, li- uh. like a little pseudopod. Can I do a tactical roll out of the way? I think, but I, I think that based on what I know of Ashling, doing the roll is not the hard part. It's the it's the insight of realizing that it's happening in the middle of doing this like really attention grabbing, um, pre- pre- precise action. Damn, I never get to use my good resistance. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to resist this. It's one tick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, 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 I almost think that Nikolaj like sees it, but wants to see what that means. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what I'm into. Absolutely. Oh boy. I think I think Ashling feels their like the hair on the back of their neck, the ivy on the back of their neck kind of stand up. I feel like it smells like ozone. Ugh. I think Nabane would call out here, but I think he calls out too late. Oh, very good. Very good. Good. Okay, great. <laughs> I think you have you have one tick here left, and I think that part of that is like there's something material that needs to happen here. Um, I, mm. I think that the the form is important, but that there is something like whether it's a powder or a chocolate. To like activate it yeah. like a catalyst or something. Exactly, exactly. Just crack open a reliquary and pour the blood on the the shape. Yo. Yeah, yeah that's I'd, what I was thinking. I'd let that ticket, absolutely. <clears throat> oh, that I'll spend almost, a reliquary. I have six ticks of reliquary. Let me take let me, let me crack yeah. up a cold one for Ditto. the boys. Do you want to find <laughs> do you want to find reliquary? We should use a regular yeah. reliquary. Yeah, it's just the one tick. Oh, true, true. Yeah. But I, I'm glad to know that we have over 12 ticks of reliquaries available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start. Does Lance also get, like, default reliquary? Lance is also pious, so oh, it's God. free so reliquaries. The, Nikolaj also has free reliquary, so we got 18. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be interested uh, to see Lance's piousness on screen. Yeah, like, we haven't yeah. we haven't brought this up, but, like, while this is going on, Everyone's on an, a mission with Sari Kali. What is that uh-huh. like for these rookies? What's this like for Lance? Uh, not my chosen. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Not with well, her. Wow. <laughs> well, he's Kai Morty. Yeah, fair. He cares it's about- interesting because we're getting two levels of that. Because Nevane is very much, oh, all my chosen. Mm-hmm. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> I've already been trying to play him as, like, trying to be protective of Sarah Kali, but in a way that she doesn't notice. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I think I think Nevane's, like... Vibes? Interest in, like, all other cultures is, like, an interesting foil to, mm. to Lance, who, like is, like, interested in other, like, non chimority cultures and, like, participates in a lot of that stuff, but is, like, feels othered by it still. Right. This is, like, you know, I may I may experience these other cultures or these other religious ceremonies, but, like, I'm a Kaimorti right. at heart, and, like, the Kaimorti traditions are the traditions that I care about. Mm-hmm. So Sarah Kali is not my chosen. She is just a chosen that is hanging out with us right now and is useful. <laughs> but perhaps maybe more with the rookies. Like this is yeah. this is yeah. a this is an avatar of God. <laughs> yeah. Backflip Bowie is uh, shaking in his boots. Uh huh. Yeah, and Gemma is also Kai Morty. Imagine like the first time, like I don't know if if Gemma like came from a different culture to the Kai Morty or has been Kai Morty their whole life but like imagine the first time you like go to a new type of service and it's just like oh wow this is new and now imagine seeing yeah like the avatar of god performing that service you're like <laughs> oh, okay so it's just like eyes glued i think ashling is perpetually the like straight mouth face emoji so you can't really tell what he's <laughs> thinking ever <laughs> this is my pious face <laughs> i think thar is like really into it Really? Uh, yeah, because well, Thar wants to be the next commander, and like, here's a person who commanded or was like part of the Senate, basically. Of like, of all leadership, that's one of the biggest, and like, she's right there. And she was at Taita's side at the the original revolution that started the Legion. Yeah. So, like, if there's anybody to ask about what's it mean to be a leader, how to be a good leader, it's Sarah Colley. And, like, Thar's probably a little disappointed that he has to stay on the cliff so far away. <laughs> does he d- Does he get mad as the, like, the guy who clearly doesn't care uh, goes, gets to go down and do a thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's probably pretty jealous of Ashley right now. <laughs> Um, well, let me see what I can do to brighten Thar's day. 
Um, <laughs> oh boy. You've completed oh boy. crafting the defensive wards. Sarikali looks them over and without saying anything, I think just steps into them um, directly into the center and draws forth the beacon and looks up into the star, brings the beacon to her chin and begins to play, but then stops short. It looks at Nabane and N- Nicolaj and back at Nabane again and says, I, I know how, I know the instrument, but not the song. I will need some manner of reference for, I will need guidance for how to speak to whatever is on the other side of this. For whatever lies beyond the sky. Uh, uh, of course. Um, uh, j- just a moment. <laughs> it reopens all of the books. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and as you do that, the, the folks up on the cliffs begin to hear something. It sounds, it, it isn't quite like a howl. It is more like, it's more like a death rattle. It is as if you are hearing like four or five people just loudly dying all at the same time. But like really leaning into that death of just like, I'm going to make sure everyone in this county hears me die. (laughs) It's all like a Wilhelm scream. Well, not not with the hilarity that a Wilhelm scream brings with it. <laughs> like, really, like, it's it's more, it, it is horrifying to hear. It is unnerving to hear. And if there is, like, absurdity to it, it is simply that it is happening, like, all at once. Over, I think, the rocks, you begin to see these creatures, these dogs, these wild hounds that have been blighted, that Mm. perhaps once lived in this place, but whether due to the proximity of the star or the machinations of Vagano, have begun to be twisted, to be shaped into something different. What's up, Lance? I think Lance would like to do a group maneuver with the rookies. Okay. To better position ourselves against these dogs. Yeah. I think I want to use channels to have acquired either like ladders or like pre-made rope bridges or something so that we can get across these canyons really quickly. That makes sense to me. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so you just spend channels and, and you have it, right? Yeah. Who did you get it from? Ashling knows how to tie knots. <laughs> <laughs> I think like the way this works is I requisition, like I'm buddy buddy with the quartermaster and I mm. requisition it special oh you know what it is um i think part of the reason why why like lance is especially buddy buddy with uh curvander is that suleiman listens to lance Mm. (laughs) because everyone listens to lance unbelievable yeah but also but also like we got suleiman from that lance and lark mission where we got like a crit on the secondary Mm. right and so suleiman was like these two seem rad i'm gonna go over there (laughs) And so still just like, we'll listen to Lance and it's just, Cravander will sometimes show up and it's just like, I, he keeps help. It makes sense that <laughs> Suleiman is kind of sketched too, because uh, Lark and <laughs> Lance are two of the more sketched <laughs> specialists. But I, I love this, like, I have to keep Lance sweet in order to keep, <laughs> to keep some sort of means of communicating with Suleiman. That's outstanding. Yeah, and Lance is like, yeah, I'll ha- be happy to talk to Suleiman for you. And then, you know, 10 weeks later, by the way, 
Do you have any extra ladders that I could take? <laughs> now, when you're saying ladders, do you mean ladders or do you mean? Is that a, a fancy name for a I'm, drug? <laughs> I mean, like, do we do we have any like 40 foot long ladders? <laughs> no. Uh, oh, a, a rope bridge that long, maybe? Yes. OK, uh, I'll just take one of those or four of those. Uh, thank you. you Amazing. If I can convince some rookies to spend part of their liberty weaving this. Yeah, sure. Look, you give a rookie some ladders, they'll do just about anything you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got a ladder bridge here. And then I'm going to do a group maneuver to get into stabbing distance. Yeah. Okay. So I think with the ladders, this creates like a controlled standard opportunity for you. Okay. The blight hounds, I think they are resisting this though. So you do still need to get up to, uh, the, the blight hounds are threat two. So you do still need to get up to threat two. Um, scale. Yeah. Can I do it with scale? I don't think so because there's just as many of these things as there are of you. Well, here, let me read you uh, lead from the front. Oh, please do. Uh, Whenever you lead a group action, improve scale up or down one level. And if you lead a group action in combat, you may count multiple sixes from different roles as a critical. Right, of course. Ooh. Pious Abuna Lance leads from the front. Yep. Yeah, that does it. Absolutely. So I think I want Ashling to come up here too, at least to just drive off these two first. I shout Ashling. And then I probably some like number Ashling 45, um, uh, which means to come to this uh, 45 degree section. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So group maneuver. So am I, am I in this? I have then? one die. Yeah, I, I'd like you to be. Um, I think Ashling's role is starting at controlled limited because Ashling doesn't have the benefit of the ladders. So group group maneuver. I think I'm going to push myself because I only have one die. Okay. Devin got a four. And Gavin got a five and a two. Okay. That's great. It's actually where we want to be. You clamber over these ridiculous rope ladders, um, scurrying into position to point forty five. Ashling admires the, the knot work on the ropes and gives a thumbs up to the rookies. Are, are, is not like Ashling's special interest? <laughs> they sure. should be very hyper focused on them. <laughs> yes, all of my characters are autistic. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Amazing. I think so. You've got a, a success with a consequence here. I'm trying to figure out. I feel like I should know this by now, but it's a controlled consequence. If I could deal one harm and there are rookies on the table, then I can just. Take a rookie, right? Kill a rookie. Yeah. yeah. But that should be resistible. It is. That is resistible. It's absolutely resistible. So what happens is Ashley is climbing up, gives a thumbs up, and one of the other rookies gives a thumbs up back, and then the a blight hound like springs at that rookie from behind. Oathsworn is an actual play podcast created by Devin Nelson, Gavin Frazier, Chris Allison, Matthew Godstyle, and me, Brendan McLeod. All music for the show is created by Devin Nelson. Find it and more at devindecibel.bandcamp.com. Find a link to their music and any of the games that we've played in the podcast description. Follow us at Oathsworn Pod on Twitter or Oathsworn on co-host. Until next time.